My name is Camilla Gibb and I'm a Canadian writer sponsored by the Canada Council for the Arts, currently living in London, England, but uh, at the moment in Ubud, Bali. Uh, very happy to be here. One of the amazing things that a festival like this offers is a chance for writers to meet with other writers and this is a truly international festival and it's done an amazing job of bringing together so many creative minds into this one space. The other thing I think is a, is a joy as a writer is to engage with audiences, both audiences who are familiar with your work and audiences who have never heard of you. Um, and to also to, to, to work across cultures as well, to have questions that come you know, from within di different traditions, um, I think actually results in a lot of asking questions in different ways, in ways perhaps that I've never thought about, which then forces me to give or find answers that perhaps I've never even articulated before. And I think there's some real value in that and making those connections through questions and answers and the conversations that ensue. Tell us a bit about your writing, what mm. you've recently written about, and how um, the response has been. And I've written three novels, um, or at least published three. I've probably thrown away as many as I've written. Um, I'm here with two of them. My first novel, which was my baby, uh, Mouthing the Words, which was published when I was a child, eight years ago. Um, and my third novel, um, Sweetness in the Belly, which is a story that's set both in Ethiopia um, in the early 1970s and in London amongst a community of Muslim refugees who have fled from Ethiopia and are struggling to rebuild lives for themselves in exile. It's very much a novel, but it was informed by um, my past as an anthropologist when I lived and worked in Ethiopia. Um, one of the greatest gifts for me, I think, in being here is that the sense, all the characters are Muslim. Um, and it has been picked up by um, uh, an Indonesian publisher and translate, translated into Bahasa Indonesia. So it came out at the festival. We launched it as Lily by Mizan. Um, and that's a tremendous gift to me to have that endorsement from a publisher who's very much committed to um, publicizing or publishing the stories of Muslim experience. And me not being a Muslim, I, couldn't, I don't think I could find a, a bigger endorsement of a story I've attempted to tell. My first two novels were different uh, from this third one in the sense that they didn't really draw upon my work as an anthropologist. They drew upon my experience being a human, I suppose. They both are dark humored tales of dysfunctional families, which I think is something we can all relate to. In your travels through Ubud, uh, meeting the audiences, and also um, in your other travels before this, um, how have, have people in, in Indonesia responded to your writing and what, what, what you're talking about, and mm. especially in terms of the, the Islamic identities that you would unearth through your writing and discussion? Right. I would say, on, on the whole, the response has been very encouraging. Even though not being a Muslim myself, my familiarity somehow through research and through friendship um, I hope, inshallah, it comes through in the writing. And the response has been um, very receptive and very warm. I've traveled throughout Indonesia last year. And often people would say to me, you know, why? Why would you, as a non-Muslim, want to write the story of, uh, of a Muslim community? Um, and I suppose it's, it's partly to do with the fact that I started writing this book in 2000, and then the events of the world shifted so dramatically um, in 2001. We had September 11th, which me living in Canada, um, the proximity and the kind of awareness of the ways in which me Muslims were being portrayed in the Western media was very disheartening. It was all about extremism. It was all about violence. It had nothing to do with, you know, my own experiences of living in Muslim communities, of living in Egypt, of living in Ethiopia, of living amongst peaceful practitioners, moderate, loving people. Um, this is what we weren't seeing this in the media. We weren't seeing the, te the stories of the vast majority of Muslims who are moderate and are engaged in peaceful practices. So I did have a sense of responsibility when I was approaching this material, or an awareness perhaps that there was a political context in which it would be received. And it felt very important to be telling another story, a story that we weren't, important to tell a Western audience uh, who wasn't getting stories of moderate 
loving people. 